Hi Taylor, this is Ann Huffman. I'm going to show you how to uh, trace this Donald that was giving you a difficult time um, <clears throat> with his Santa hat on it. And of course the daisy that you selected had a black background and I've already posted a tutorial on it. So let's start with uh, Donald uh, first. I think the um, threshold of 45 looks really good to me, so I'm just going to click OK and let's find out. Actually, no, I see that there's uh, uh, an area there that I'm not happy with, and then this doesn't look so good jagged around his mouth. And so to fix that, I'm just going to delete this one and uh, click back here. And I'm going to reduce the threshold to a lower number. Probably, I still see a little line right there. So maybe 38 might be the magic number. So we'll say OK. And yeah, that looks a whole lot better. We still have a little remnant piece here. And it's a little jagged here. Uh, but I think that's to be expected since the the image that you selected the resolution on it is very low to begin with so if your image is not good your trace is not going to be very good that's why it's always important to look for images that uh, have sharper details like Daisy does around <clears throat> her eyes and you can look at Donald eyes and see that it's low resolution it's just very low the black lines are not as distinct as they are on Daisy uh, here. But anyway, this will serve uh, the purpose of this uh, tutorial for you. So now that it's um, traced, let's break it into pieces and see what goes on. Everything turned black, so that's <clears throat> really good. We like that. So now let's start coloring things that's white. And then that means that part is going to be white. So let's see. There's face around there. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know what that part of his mouth is. So let's just go ahead and get this part. And I'll use the dropper and, and the color on the uh, daisy over there. I guess that's going to be that same color. Yes. Okay. Then we'll get in here. Let me use the edit node tool to see if I can pick up that little piece right here. And I can't. So <clears throat> I know what we'll be doing with it. And likewise, this uh, red part of the Santa hat uh, is not a separate piece yet. So what happens is, and I think this is where you were experiencing uh, your um, issues, <clears throat> is when it does not trace into a separate piece when you click on break apart, that's when you use the fill tool. I call it the paint bucket. And we're just going to click on it. And I'm going to go over here and just click this little uh, paintbrush to reset everything back to uh, the default. <clears throat> the threshold is um, how much of this of this area do I want the uh, fill tool to pick up. And of course, the gross shrink is how close to the edge do I want it to go. So let's just see what we have here. <clears throat> I'm going to, I am uh, clicking on my original and I'm going to drag it over to my trace copy and I think I have it close enough there and let's use this dropper tool <clears throat> and that's really all it is uh, to that oh wait I have this piece here and since it's so small I'm going to click on it and increase it <clears throat> so that I can it's a, a a decent enough size that I can see what my paint bucket does and I think it did okay it's not perfect 
and of course I can drag this to make it however uh, much bigger I want it uh, to be so now let me bring it back to size I think I've covered everything well it, it has the eyes uh, this color but let's make it that blue that Daisy's eyes are <clears throat> So that, that's all it is to um, the, uh, whenever you're having a problem and you're unable to get a, a piece or a part to break apart, then you're going to use the fill tool. And basically, if you think of it kind of like copying it and that the fill tool is filled with glue or paste and you're pouring it into the mold or the shape of this, so you're copying it from this and you're pasting it, which is dragging it over to your trace. If you think of it in that, that uh, respect, then it'll make a whole lot more sense to you. So now, <clears throat> let me group it. Move it uh, sort of out of the way here. And since I'm finished, I will uh, go ahead and delete my original. So now let's trace Daisy. And I really like to uh, enlarge it so that um, the scanning software will pick up on more details like the little white parts there in her eye. So trace is path, trace bitmap. <clears throat> um, it was at, I uh, reduced the threshold from the default of 45 to that 38 before. But I'm going, I like to go back to my default because that's where the software says I should get a decent trace, so I click OK. <clears throat> I have the wrong one. And this is Daisy, and she looks really good. All her lines are nice and thick. I can see everything, so I'll uh, delete the preview. And now let's break it apart so that we uh, will be able to layer it. If you just wanted to use it, um, as uh, an image that goes on a kid's shirt that they're going to use the washable crayons with, then you would be done. It would be a matter of that point of just file and save as and saving it as a plain SVG. But we want to layer. So we're going to go back to path and we're going to say break it apart. Break this image into all of the cuttable pieces. And it's supposed to turn black. That lets you know that um, it has broken it into all of the uh, available pieces that it can. There's an outer bounding box that is the background on it. And then all of the other smaller bounding boxes are just these individual pieces that you see. Sometimes it doesn't look like it's that many, but it actually is. Now we can click on the outer bounding box and pull it over. <clears throat> And this would be the silhouette. And this is a really good way to do um, silhouettes versus finding a silhouette on Google and tracing it because you're tracing a copy of a copy. It's better to trace an original and then just use that bottom or base piece as your silhouette. So <clears throat> I just want to show you what that looks like. So now let's just go ahead and color some things in. And I'm just going to use a dropper tool. Uh, instead of my color palette down here at the bottom but I'm sure if I slid this part over and I get into the purple I probably would find a shade similar to her bow but that's just too much work for me right now so let's get the eyes and I'm, again I'm just using a dropper tool this is actually more just for a visual because um, the color that you have in um, of your well let me make this grayish because white on white is not being seen very well so there we go we'll just make it gray <clears throat> um, unless you're doing a print and cut it doesn't matter what color you um, paint uh, these different uh, pieces because it's all about I just clicked there it's all about um, the physical vinyl that you have in your hand that you're going to place in your cutter that matters. Here, here, here. And I'm just holding the shift key down as I click on all of these different pieces. 
and I'll go back and pick up this gray since it's all white. And that's because I've moved the background uh, away from it. Now if I put this background back here where it belongs, I can then take all of these pieces and color them uh, white and that the white is going to show up because there's that black background. <clears throat> and so let's see the band. And I don't know where, I know that there are some white spots. I was able to find that one. Can't find the other one. So I use this tool, the edit node tool, just to help me find pieces that when I click on it <clears throat> with a select tool, I can't readily find. So that's one there. And now we're getting in between the eyelashes. And that just might do her. Looks like she's all done. And so now that we're finished, I am gonna just uh, group all the pieces together. <clears throat> if you have a silhouette machine like I do, uh, for some reason with Inkscape uh, SVGs, when you open them up in your Silhouette Designer or Designer Plus or uh, Business Edition, some pieces will uh, go to the very bottom behind the black silhouette that's there. For example, you might open it up and the eyes are not showing just black, but they are there. They're just on the very bottom. So you just have to keep ungrouping and moving pieces away until you find uh, where your, um, your hidden pieces are. And I don't know why it does that. It doesn't do it all the time, but most of the time it does. So now I've shown you, uh, Taylor, exactly what to do when you come across that problem again. So the only thing left uh, that I do is <clears throat> I use my snipping tool that comes with my Windows software and I just save a um, picture. <clears throat> so that I can include it with my zip file when I upload it to give everybody an opportunity to preview uh, what's going on with it. So I'm ready to save it and this file save as. In Donald, I just get rid of the JPEG because that's what I named the last file. It defaults to Inkscape. You want to click on that little drop down and select plain SVG and that's sort of like a generic uh, setting so that your SVG can be opened in almost anyone's cutting machine software if you decide to uh, share the file. So I'm going to go ahead and post this and if you have any questions by all means um, please post them on there. I hope that uh, I was able to uh, help you figure out what was going wrong with the Santa hat.